Hey, how are you affording all of this? Everything is on EMI, bro. I just found out that if you can't afford something, you can just do it on EMI. So you realize that you cannot afford any of this, but you still bought it. Yeah, YOLO. 90% of Indians earn below 3 lakhs in India and they still want to buy expensive items because they are a status symbol. No, not this. This is just a normal watch, man. 10 years back, I bought for 6,000 rupees. How do I know all of this? Because I follow my man. Hey, no man. Because 70% of iPhones that are sold in India, I bought under EMI. If you earn a good amount of money, buying all this expensive shit is fine. But if you buy it when you can barely live paycheck to paycheck, you're not buying it. But someone is selling it to you. Now I know what you're gonna say. I know I shouldn't spend money on things I can't afford. But I just can't stop myself. <laughs> well, I have been there in the past. And I have used some tricks that led me to control my lust for materialistic things. Or if I really wanted to buy something, something these hacks help me save a lot of money since i was feeling generous today i thought let me share these secrets with you brokies firstly we all know how much online shopping has taken over the world everyone's sitting in the comfort of their homes scrolling through god knows how many online shopping apps to top all of that doing transactions online has become so easy that we don't check all the pricing options available from different stores for that same product to solve that an easy hack is to use price comparison tools like Keepa, Price Before, Price History App, etc. They save you from buying something at a premium price. You can also set price drop alerts using online tools and gain an advantage of goods selling cheaply. A lot of sites provide student discounts. For example, Air Vistara offers up to 10% discount on their online class tickets along with extra baggage allowance. Samsung offers a 10% discount on their Galaxy devices to students. Lenovo 2 offers discounts up to 10,000 rupees on laptops. And for people like him, even Apple offers student discounts up to 10% on MacBooks and iPads. So if you have younger siblings who are college going, you can buy these products in their name using their college IDs. For something that you absolutely need but can't really afford, check out websites that sell renewed and refurbished items like Amazon Renewed, Cashified, etc. Don't be like this Nimmon who doesn't need any of this shit but still bought it. Pro tip, you can check out eRefurb.in. They also sell recertified quality laptops at a 40 to 50% discount with a six months warranty. Now I know that a few minutes back I said, don't buy anything you can't afford, but we all know that we will anyway end up buying stuff that we don't need. So for times like these, there's a smart way that you can use your credit card to your advantage. Consider your lifestyle and get a card that provides maximum benefit. If you're someone who drives a lot, cards providing fuel benefits may be the best for you. If you travel by air frequently, like I do, because I'm an influencer, co-branded cards like Axis Bank Vistara, Air India SBI, and so on would be a great choice for you. Pro tip, become a member of Intermiles. It's a lifestyle and travel rewards program. If you're already a member, log into Amazon or Flipkart via Intermiles. This ensures that you get double the benefits from Intermiles as well as from your credit card provider on the purchases that you make. But Sharon, such reward programs and credit cards have an annual fees, right? And that's expensive, right? Ruko jara. For example, SBI's elite card fee is Rs 4,999 may feel like too much of an expense. But when you check the privileges of that card, you might find that there are free movie tickets worth 6,000 rupees. Also, you get a welcome gift voucher of Rs 5,000 rupees and 10x reward points too. Now that deal sounds pretty good to me. If the credit card offers the benefits you need, and if you can recover these fees by all means, you should consider high-end cards. While we are talking about shopping smartly to save more, how can we forget the cost we incur on shopping? In the case of clothes, it's hard to filter what you really need and what's just a fancy bag. Hey, don't look at me like that, bro. I need all of this. Do not be like him. Look for clothing that can last and can be paired with existing clothes using mix and match. If you have four shirts, three pairs of jeans and two jackets, then you can combine them to make 24 different outfits. Sounds good enough, right? Now let's say I have this brown jacket. I have a yellow jacket, I have a black jacket, and I have like three, four check shirts. I have around five to six t-shirts. I have four jeans pants. So all in all, I have around 20 to 25 clothes. How do I know all of this? Because I input all the clothes that I have into this app called A Closet. Another app for this is something called as Smart Closet. So what this app does is, it uses AI to mix and match all of my different clothes and shows me n number of outfits. Also, the next time I go shopping, I know exactly what I already own. So I can whip up my phone, see what clothes I have and see if whatever I'm buying matches with the clothes that I already have. How often have you felt, I wish I knew whether I had this clothes and then after you purchase it, you go back home and check it out and then you see that you already have that in your wardrobe. 
We've all been there. Now, when you're done with wearing all the clothes that you have, you don't need to just throw them away. You can just resell it. There are a lot of resale markets for branded jackets, bags and shoes. Stores like TFT, Poshmark, FreeUp can help you with the reselling. And if you do want to sell them, you can also swap your old clothes with other clothes which are available in these apps. If you like that, Give it a try when you're done with using them. Now you might say, Sharon, you don't understand some necessary expenditure. I had to buy a 50,000 rupees traditional outfit for my uncle's cousin's daughter's wedding. Stupid! Why are you buying clothes for wearing just once a year? According to a wise survey of about 9,500 people, 23% said that they buy clothes for one-time use and then these clothes rot away in the back of their closet. There is absolutely no upside for such consumer behavior. Rent instead. You can find many shops in your locality that rent out clothes for just 10% of their original price. And if not local shops, you can try this online too. Sites like Rented Bay, Stylies, Rented an Attire or Flyro give you such service. I got a cool wedding outfit which cost 1.3 lakhs for just 6,000 rupees at Flyro. Lifesaver, right? Now that we've covered online shopping, let's talk about offline shopping. If you're stepping out to shop, keep your belly full because that helps your brain to make wise decisions. University of South California professor Schwartz, along with others, confirmed in a research report that hunger increases the chance of people buying anything that grabs their attention. Another study examined the relationship between actual purchases of fashion, shoes and electronics at the mall and the shopper's degree of hunger. In this study, hungry shoppers spent 64% more money and bought 88% more products than those who were less hungry. This is mad. Imagine if you ate 100 rupees worth of food before going shopping, you could save thousands of rupees in terms of unnecessary expenses. Another trick is to use the money from your liquid funds for fun purchases. Now we all know that when we try to withdraw money from our liquid funds, it will make us wait for a couple of days before the money hits our savings bank account. You have no choice but to wait until that time. Wait a minute! Say during this waiting period, you realize that the pair of expensive sneakers is not a need but rather an impulsive purchase. Once you have that clarity, you may be able to skip that purchase. It's all in the mind, guys. And if you're a business owner, this one is going to blow your mind. Check out the tax exemptions you can get when you buy furniture or gadgets. Buying in the name of the business can help you claim depreciation on that purchase amount. Plus, GST input tax credit. Suppose you're planning to buy a new mobile phone. You may use it for your business calls. If you are a business owner, you can buy this phone in the name of your business and claim an input tax credit. Once you get the tax invoice with the company name, GST number, HSN number and company address, you are good to go. When the supplier files the GST returns and pays taxes to the government, you can get that input tax credit. If you are an equity investor, I have some additional tips for you. Let's look at the image. If you own shares of Bata, Hawkins Cookers, Indian Hotels Company, Titan, Trident, etc., you get a special discount for being their customers. They may come with some conditions. Now I know there's a lot of burger lovers among you. If you own Burger King share, which is trading at around 110 to 140 rupees, and if you buy two King Collection burgers, whatever that is, you can save up to 50% on the MRP, close to 200 rupees. But all in all guys, being cautious about one's mental biases and emotions will make you a better shopper. Every rupee saved today is going to compound beautifully over the next 20 to 30 years if you invest it properly. For example, check out your monthly spending. Suppose you can reduce it by only 3,000 rupees using the tricks above and invest them via an SIP. After 30 years, you can expect this investment to be close to 1 crore, assuming even a 12% percentage per year return. If that motivates you, get your ass in line. I use all of these methods that we discussed today and I am a personal finance creator. So I know what I'm talking about guys. I still use just my phone to shoot most of my content. I don't have a super complex wardrobe having 10 different items for every type of social situation. All these things will help you in the long run, not just financially, but mentally also. Your financial planning works best when expenses don't spiral out of bounds. I'm spiraling. In today's world of consumer debt, it is truly hard to filter out what really is a need and what's just a fancy buy. One such example of a need is that subscribe button. You need to subscribe to my channel so that you can save more money in the future by watching my videos. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.